Hello once again, everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a tour review for the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Retro Rock Garage set, which prominently features uh, Bumblebee, along with two previously unreleased cassette molds from the old uh, Japanese Generation 1 toy line. So, pretty neat, interesting little set. Admittedly, I wasn't really crazy about the idea of buying yet another Bumblebee, especially, you know, one from a mold that I already have, but they kind of won me over with the cassettes because they, they played to my obsessive compulsive need to collect it all, you know. But anyway, uh, let's get started. We'll take a look at the box. You can see a pretty good size. It has this really nice illustration of Bumblebee with a little beat box down there. It's got the Transformers and kind of a, a sprayed look there, generation sign, all that. Side of the box has this nice gold image of Bumblebee. This is Studio Series number 19. Unfortunately, it seems like half of the Studio Series figures are just going to be different versions of Bumblebee, but eh, what can you do? Back of this is really neat. Uh, this whole outer sleeve of the box is done up like the uh, sleeve around a cassette tape, and you'll see why that is. Um, you know, got this really cool Bumblebee logo, Volume 1, as if this were a cassette, Retro Rock Garage. Uh, it's supposed to be I Heart 80s, but, you know, it's an Autobot symbol instead, so that's cute, I guess. Uh, side A, Side B, just like old audio cassette tapes had, for all of you youngins that aren't familiar. Uh, got some songs on here, Let the Good Times Roll Out. So they're all, they're all Transformers puns. Got you on Speed Dial, uh, Mr. Cassetto Botto, instead of Mr. Roboto. Rock out with your leg out. <laughs> I get it, leg out, like the Transformer. Uh, Energon for nothing, alt mode Monday, Rust will tear us apart and get stung. Because, you know, Bumblebee, har har. And it's got this cool image of a, a garage, you know, there's a car being worked on, tool bench, all that. A lot of detail into this. Um, bigger version of that gold Bumblebee logo. And you might be able to tell, if you look at the edges of this sleeve, they have a worn appearance to them. They're intentionally cut in this kind of jagged fashion to look like an old worn out, you know, cassette sleeve. So a nice little touch. It's a good way of having a worn looking box without having, you know, an actual worn box for all you inbox collectors out there. And now we'll pull the sleeve off. And here is the inner box, which is an audio cassette right there prominently featured. You got Bumblebee inside of this clear plastic window. You can see he's gold, and we'll take a better look at him in a moment. It's got the label with, you know, what's supposed to be like handwriting for the uh, name of the cassette. Two by 45 minutes, because, you know, old cassette tapes, they had two sides. Each one could play up to a certain amount of time. This one would be 45 minutes. TF high def, because, you know, rhymes, har har. 19 is the studio series number. This is side A, this is Bumblebee on it, so that's neat. Here's the underside where you would normally see the actual tape inside of the cassette. One. Nice blue Autobot symbol on that end. TF high def on that end. Um, top of the window that you can look down at Bumblebee. You can see Transformers molded into that. And then the back is just side B. So nothing really different from the front side. And has Bumblebee handwritten on there. The bottom here has a little flap that you can pull out and slide a little tray out. And this is where the cassettes are stored as well as their accessories and Bumblebee's accessory. And on the inside you can see Transformers in there. All right, so we got a good look at the package itself. Now we're gonna go ahead and open everything up and see what's inside the package and get to play with them like the big man children we are. All right, here are the contents of the box. Got Bumblebee himself, the cassettes, their accessories, these instructions, which are regular paper instructions, like most new Transformers. They're done up in yellow because, you know, Bumblebee, which I don't mind because it makes it much easier to see the yellow highlighted parts rather than having like a dark red or dark purple. Talks about these guys here. Bumblebee himself is a purely a redeco of the Studio Series Camaro Bumblebee. We'll get a good look at him first. The cassettes 
are uh, they're interesting. They're old dinosaur cassettes from the original um, Japanese Generation One line. However, they're not just read echoes. Uh, they're actually recreations of the original molds. Um, assuming the original molds weren't available anymore, so they somehow managed to reverse engineer them, which is something you do not see very often with Transformers. It's usually reuse the same mold or just don't do it. So I'm really impressed that they actually went through these lengths for what is only a limited run convention exclusive. Now there's some drawbacks to what they did and we will definitely get to talking about those. But first let's put our focus on Bumblebee. As already stated, Bumblebee is a redeco of the Studio Series toy, which I do have right here for comparison. So you can see them. This Bumblebee is done up in this new dark gold color, which is not accurate to any uh, in-universe color scheme he's ever had or anything. It's purely just to make him stand out and look special. It is very, very nice looking. It's got a nice sheen to it. The paint on the translucent panels here matches up much better to the plastic color than the original Bumblebee's does. You can see a pretty noticeable difference here. The uh, racing stripe designs are completely different between the two. Instead of the normal two straight black lines, he just has this hood design right here, which just kind of tapers inward toward the uh, end. And it says Bumblebee on both sides with his little symbol that's kind of the logo for the new movie that he's going to be in. He's got Z28 on the sides. I don't actually know what that's a reference to, so forgive my ignorance. He's got Z28 on the grill as well. And then in addition to those designs, he's got just some regular paint apps for the headlights, the grill there, the rear lights. License plate isn't painted. You can see he stores his gun right there on the back, just like the regular toy. Of course, it is optional. I don't want to have that on there. But he has a very sleek car mode, rolls well. And all in all, though it's not as screen accurate as the regular Studio Series, I, I think it's much better better looking, just as a car itself. If the Studio Series B had more of a nice sheen to his paint job, I'd probably change my mind about that, but not the case. All right, here's the robot mode. You can see it's very detailed. You're seeing a lot of silver paint on him now, which looks really good with like the metallic gold on his body. He just really stands out, he looks very shiny, which I like. This toy has uh, a lot of tightness improvements over the regular run of the Camaro mold here. A lot of the joints that were loose on the old one are much tighter for him, including the legs, and especially where his uh, feet tab in. There was kind of a big issue that most people had with the yellow version where they wouldn't stay tabbed, so he was very prone to having his feet just kind of come undone, flopping over. Also, this bit, where his like hood section, it kind of plugs into his back there. On at least my copy of the yellow one, it doesn't stay in, it keeps popping back out. This one doesn't have that issue. So it's interesting because normally with successive mold uses, uh, joints and parts tend to get looser, tolerances tend to get worse. They actually improved it. So I, I don't know if it just happenstance or if they actually did some work to make the total package work better. He has a little cannon weapon, just like the regular version. And just like the regular version, it can be stored kind of on his butt here. Just plug it into the little hole. Though it does get in the way. Um, kind of forces his legs forward a little bit. Really nothing that can be done for that. Or you can detach his right arm at the elbow here. Plug this in, and then plug his arm in. Yeah, it seems to fit best this way, just like that. Gets in the way the least. So you can have him kind of in a battle mode. Now there is no mask for him. He can't don his little battle visor or anything, but still looks really good. Here he is compared to the normal version. You can see this guy's colors 
I don't know, they kind of trade off because the primary color is more muted looking. It's not as bright and vibrant, but the, whereas like the dark gray on here is pretty dark, pretty muted. Um, the silver highlights on this version really pop out. So it's kind of interesting. I don't know if there's an overall better version. Obviously, you know, it's going to be subjective no matter what, but I'd say they're both good in their own way. Tolerance issues aside, anyway. Here's Yellow Bee's Canon for comparison purposes. Next up, we have the cassettes. You have Dairu and Uruaz. They have very strange names that I'll explain to you all in a moment. Dairu is an Autobot, like Bumblebee, and he actually has a working rep sign, like the original toys based off of. Look at that one there for a moment. Come on. You can make out the Autobot symbol on there. Uruaz, very strangely, is a Decepticon. So, activate his rep sign. Not as responsive as the old ones used to be. All right, there you can see them. So, these two are very strange and interesting. Like I said, they're made from reconstructed molds of the originals. Uh, Dairu is a redeco, well, kind of redeco, you know, new mold technically, but of uh, Dial, which was the original version um, from the Japanese toy line. And Dairu is like a, a romanization of how they say Dial in Japanese, because the L's and R's are a little hazy. Uruaz, uh, being a Decepticon, he's kind of the inverse of an upcoming figure called Zoru, which will be an Autobot version. So same mold and everything, just this one's evil, the other one's good, and their names are swapped. So the regular version, uh, Zoru, is based on Zor, the other Japanese counterpart to this duo. And, you know, Zoru is, again, a romanization of how they would pronounce that. So oddly enough, you have an Autobot and a Septicon paired up that can combine together. And there's going to be an upcoming Retro Rock Garage Volume 2 that's going to have a gold version of the Volkswagen Bumblebee, along with a Decepticon version of him and then the Autobot version of this guy. So I guess the idea is that you buy both sets so that you can have the two Autobots combine, the two Decepticons combine. Sounds like a bit of a marketing scam to me, but hey, whatever. So you can tell these, these two don't make very strong cassettes. You know, th these molds, their popularity is based only in their obscurity because they're they're not great. You know, imagine a cassette tape that look like that. But they are fully compatible with the original uh, Soundwave and Blaster, as well as the Masterpiece Soundwave. They will fit inside their chest compartments, so that's cool. Honestly, these two are the only reason that I bought this set. I really did not need another Bumblebee, even if he is all gold and silver and cool looking. So, you know, they knew what they were doing. They knew they would rope in the hardcore, old school G1 collectors by having these obscure new cassette molds in here. But enough rambling about them. Let's go ahead and transform them to their dinosaur modes. And here we have the dinosaur modes. Zoru turns into some sort of bipedal dinosaur. I don't know if he's supposed to be like a raptor, T-Rex, or what. But it's very tall compared to Uruaz. That little bit of lower body split he gets due to transformation does help balance him because he can kind of spread his legs apart a little bit. He's got his guns attached to his hips there. He's got a tail, neck that has multiple points of articulation. And uh, yeah, I, I got to point out that the chrome on these guns is gorgeous. It is very shiny. Doesn't flake off or anything. Well, not yet. You know, check back in 10 years but they do look very good. Uraz is some sort of a brachiosaur, I suppose. Brontosaurus, whatever. He is very oddly proportioned. He's got these tiny little legs and a very, very long neck. It's definitely not my favorite of the two when it comes to their, uh, well, really any mode, I guess. He's cast in mostly translucent plastic, as you can see. And his uh, Decepticon buddy in the uh, Volume 2 pack will also be translucent plastic. Whereas Dairu's buddy will not be, so it'll match a little bit better once you get both packs. So, you know, he's got his eyes painted in there. His tail can, you know, 
you can lift it up, you can have it kind of drag on the ground for balance like I have it. And they're just fun little cassettes. If you never were if you never were able to procure the original versions of these molds, which let's face it, if you didn't live in Japan, you probably didn't. Now's a chance to do that. And lastly, we're gonna look at their combined mode, because they do combine together. And we're also gonna see just how horribly they messed up this whole remolding thing. So let's take a look. So this combined form doesn't have a name. It is based on the original combiner named Legout, which may end up being this guy's name, I, I don't know. It's not listed anywhere, it's never been said by Hasbro or anything, so. You can call him Legout, you can make up a name, whatever floats your boat. He's not great looking, honestly. Uh, none of the old cassette combiners were very good looking in toy form. His proportions are very strange. He's very heavily armed. He's got shoulder cannons, hip cannons. Fairly articulated. Uh, you can see I have him leaning back a little bit, and there's a reason for that. He uh, very much lacks stability on the front of his feet, and this is why. You can tell right away something's off, right? His feet don't match up. So somehow, some way, in recreating this mold, they made these little foot pieces connect at like different points in his legs. This one connects much lower, this one much higher. I don't know how they screwed this up. I don't know how that got past QA, but this one's so high that it doesn't reach the ground. Like it's just, it's too high up. It doesn't make contact with the surface on the flat surface, so it provides no support. This one is too low down to where this little piece right here clashes with this black piece and it can't flip down all the way. So you have two feet that for different reasons are completely useless. They don't do anything to help stabilize the toy. They're crooked, they don't look good. I really don't know how they messed that up. It seems like a very strange mistake to make and it's even stranger that nobody caught that. So he does have severe balance issues. You do have to get him to lean back a little bit to take some of the weight off the front of him there. Or alternatively, what you can do is you can kind of mistransform him a little bit, flip these pieces around to become kind of alternative feet for him, which do fix the problem of him falling forward, but then he loses all rear support, so now he's more likely to fall back. So it's kind of a matter of picking your poison. Um, <laughs> There is, there is no win here. It's definitely a lose-lose. And it's a very major mistake that could have been so easily avoided, but for some reason it wasn't. Who knows? And that does it for this review. I can't say I wholeheartedly recommend this set because of the price associated with it. It's a $60 set for what is, you know, basically a $20 figure and, I don't know, two $5 figures maybe? It's definitely overpriced. You're not getting nearly as good a deal for this as you are like the uh, Throne of the Prime set, which was also released at the same Comic-Con. I'm really disappointed overall with this. I mean, the Bumblebee is good. I think he's very nice looking with his colors. I just really don't need more Bumblebees in my collection. It's definitely not what I bought the set for. The cassettes, which should have been awesome to have, despite their kind of old wonky, you know, Generation 1 engineering, it are such a disappointment. One, they oddly are mixing up a an opaque Autobot dinosaur with a translucent Decepticon dinosaur, making them combine. It looks really off. I get why they did it, because they want you to buy both sets. But really, the biggest thing is just the, the feet. I really... It's kind of a deal breaker. On, if I had known um, that they were going to be like that, I probably wouldn't have bought this. It's got me very hesitant to pick up the Volume 2, which should be coming uh, very soon. I'm happy I get to experience these molds. Probably never would have otherwise. I just wish it had been under better terms. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's really, really up to you if you think it's worth the purchase price. I would say hold out until Volume 2 to see if they fix the feet, but I already know they didn't. I've already seen screenshots of Zoru, which is the Autobot Brontosaurus thing. And yeah, his feet are messed up too. So it's not going to get any better. But that's what I think of it. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments section. I hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you enjoyed getting a good look at these and 
found it informative, help you decide whether or not you're going to pick this thing up. If you do like these toy reviews I do, or you're curious to maybe take a look at some of the other types of videos I do, such as some discussion videos, which admittedly are few and far between due to time constraints, go ahead and subscribe. Just click the button down there. If you want to get notified of any time that I post a new video, make sure you hit the notification bell. And with that, I'm going to end the video. Thanks for joining me today, and I will see you all next time.